Sir, yeah. So this is where we left last time. Intelligence varies from species to species. So uh, a dog has far more better senses than a human. So does that mean a dog is more intelligent than a human? No, right? But what makes us say that a human is more intelligent than a dog? Because we could do a bunch of other better things than a dog can do. So with that in mind, do you have to model each and every speck of a brain to a computer to call it intelligent? Do you have to model gut feeling? That's a whole research question. But if you can model some required parts of a brain to a computer, and then if a computer can do a bunch of other different things, then we could surely call a computer intelligent than a brain. So my next few slides are organized in a way which talks how similar a computer and a brain is and also talks about the technologies that helps us how we learn brain, how we're going to learn brain. So and, uh, I, I was just listening to a very, uh, inter very interesting, I think it was an NPR program or one of, one of those podcasts. And um, I think, it, it, you know, the scientist was saying that we are the only uh, species where we can imagine <coughs> or we can put ourselves uh, you know, you can you can imagine that uh, you know that face is red. Face is not red, but um, we can imagine Emily's face being red. We can, you know, that 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 imagination is simply not there in any species whatsoever. That's what it was claiming. Right? That's so unique. I got one. Uh... Where, where is Udkarshni? So before actually going to the next few slides, I mean there are two questions that I need to answer from the previous class. I mean the first question is does speed in computation mean intelligence? So let me just give you a scenario uh, where uh, consider there are two persons when I pose, propose a topic to them, if a person could relate to several other subjects in a short time and then present it to compare to a person who doesn't even retrieve any information. So. From that perspective, yes, speed is intelligence, right? But does speed only mean intelligence? No. Speed is one of the parameters in intelligence. I think that answers one of the questions in the previous class. And the other question that is, is at a given point of time, I mean, how could you compare two entities or two objects that one wins over the other is the same, is the question that's from the last class. But that fits weakly into my criteria. I mean, yeah. So, uh, so my point of here is Deep Blue, I mean, has defeated Gary Gaspro. That uh, that does mean that Deep Blue can defeat any person, any average human. And when we consider that computers, I mean, computer technology is growing exponentially compared to human brain evolution or something. So, so yeah. So let me go to the next few slides. Uh, from the computational perspective, let's see how computer is similar to a brain. So for every computational system, we categorize four, four features that say this is a computational system or something. So these four categories are input-output system, processing information, functionally organized, feedback control system. We all know that these four, uh, computer fits into these four categories. But then let's see how brain fits into these categories. Yeah, so brain takes input, I mean, stimulus from the senses and then gives the, out, um, gives the output to the motors. So brain clearly fits into the input-output system and then processing system. And brain, how brain is functionally organized. Before actually, um, in olden days, we have this left brain, right brain theory. And we know brain as just those two functional parts, but then as of today on knowing brain better, we actually know which functional part of brain does touch, which functional part of brain does speech, which functional part of brain does thinking, but then uh, there's a whole lot to discover. So this clearly states that brain is a functionally organized or it has some building blocks like an architecture. Brain as a feedback loop system. Let me give you a scenario to understand this. I mean, suppose if you are 
placed in a situation where the temperature is less than 0 degrees Celsius or something, uh, you tend to shiver. That's the brain that actually tells you to shiver in order to control the body temperature inside. So this does mean that brain is acting as a feed, negative feedback control system where it reduces the error. So the current well, shivering could be happening in animal too, right? It doesn't have to be a human brain. Yeah, animals do have brain, right? Right. So it doesn't have to be that intelligent. That 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 doesn't uh, you know point out any particular level of intelligence. Human intelligence. Uh, no, yeah. I mean I moved on from intelligence to computational perspective, where okay. I say that brain is a computer. So. Yep, basically, so a brain also acts as a negative feedback system where we reduce error, similar to how it, uh, how learning process in a computer is. So, yeah, uh, let me just tell you from the perspective of neuroscience and the cognitive science, what are the technologies that are actually helping us to learn brain better? So, this connectome, this is the current technology where we map all the neural networks from a brain to a simulated environment. This is currently in the research phase. Uh, so when this is completely done, if you could give us several input and record the responses to the output, so we could definitely uh, get somehow understanding how brain works. When you say brain acting as a computing machine, so is um, a feeling of emotion a computational um, artifact? Yes, of course. Yeah? Yeah. Uh, that's where this emotional intelligence arises, right? The concept of emotional intelligence and then learning. So what is it? It's just, uh, uh, what, what, what computation is it? What, tell me what computation is uh, when I have a feeling of <laughs> disgust or anger or love. What, 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 what computation there is? I don't know. Maybe something, uh, I mean. Uh, if, if there is kind of anger or any kind of situation, there, there should be a stimulus in the world which makes you do that, so... Uh, but that stimulus, I, is uh, that a biological phenomenon or is it a computational phenomenon? Uh, I mean, so if something happens in a real world which you do not like, uh, if we, you might have already, I mean, stated some, so, uh, some things or you might have already learned some things in your brain and then something against it happens or something like that, then, then you perceive perceive that and, and, and you maybe tend to question that this should not be this way and maybe you, you generate that emotion that, in that, response is, to that, uh, in response to that action in the real is world. Is that fully factual? Is that fully rational? I mean, is it uh, uh, is it uh, is it going to be reduced to some? Uh, it, do you do something in um, computer science that is not uh, uh, in, um, that is completely what you call? Um, uh, it is biological plus computational. I think so. But then, don't you have to argue that uh, things are computational if you want to say brain is a computer? So, so I mean. Uh, That's what you're arguing, right? Uh, yeah, from the computational perspective, yes. So, so I mean, so your question is, does emotions represent computation? Yeah. So, can I you mean, can you can you really capture human emotions as computation? Yeah, I mean, so I could provide you an insight that emotion could be a computation, but. I don't think that would be a fact or something which I could claim as of now. But uh, then I think we, this is to be yet to be discovered fact or something. So how could we represent emotion as a computational perspective? I think that should be a research question. Right. To to to, to claim that a brain is a computer, you'll have to. That would be this will be one of the many questions you'll have to answer and affirmatively, right? Mm. In a high level perspective, uh, I kind of answered this question, right? but then emotion, how could you represent emotion as a statistical way? This is yet to be discovered. I, I could just say this is yet to be discovered. And that doesn't mean that emotion could not even be represented as a... Uh, you're not claiming that the emotion could not even be, could not be represented as a statistic? Yeah, that's what I would claim right now until you prove me otherwise. Uh, I mean, 
I mean, you, you are arguing brain is a computer, and I am going to argue that brain is not a computer. And I am giving you a counter example that uh, I if think you can't show me that uh, brain can represent uh, a, an emotion uh, and we can recreate it in the same way that human I can, uh, brain is not a computer, you know. Um, so, to that question, I mean, I could simply say we both met an impasse which future could answer us. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yep. So. Well, you guys quiet. Uh, so, th this is a blueprint project. I mean, this is one another technology. I mean, where they were actually uh, looking at, I mean, so if you are looking at it, those, uh, so they were actually recording the neuron impulses and, and learning from that. This is even in the developing phase. But the reason why I'm projecting these is, uh, these are the technologies that help us learn brain. So when we learn brain and when we could represent this in a statistical way, we could actually uh, we could actually claim that brain is a computer. So let me so I mean everybody could have this question: Does learning neurons help us learn brain or something? So I am going to provide some insights in my next few slides. Okay, so brain hacking. Uh, this is not a technology, but then uh, this is like an intuition that your brain can be falsely trained similar to a computer algorithm. So, like uh, a person, a person who is amputated, uh, we could make him, we could make his brain feel that he has an arm through this experiment, through this mirror box therapy. So, yeah, and then uh, okay. So I, I think I'm not giving some time to for you to post questions or something. Mm. Yeah. So, yeah. If there are questions, please stop me. And then psychological perspective. Uh, let's look at from psychological perspective. Uh, yeah. So inspiration is better than imitation. So consider a scenario where before actually the uh, introduction of an artificial flight or or invention of an artificial flight. There is always this question, can humans fly like a bird? So at that time, research scientists used to imitate the flapping of the birds to actually produce the artificial flight. But then what it came out to be true is that aerodynamics drive the artificial flight. So with this in mind, rather, rather than imitating each and every speck of a computer to a brain, uh, uh, rather than each and every speck of a brain to a computer, uh, we could actually inspire from current brain and then implement it in a computer. So, yeah, so inspiration from teams, hum, uh, humans usually exhibit this social activity, so grouping in teams. So, uh, with this inspiration, we actually developed the distributed computing and moreover, the goal dedication proposed by Dr. Rogers Shang actually solves this social activity uh, uh, that robots or an autonomous agent could also exhibit go, uh, social activity. So goal day. Okay. Yeah, no. Uh, your basically your argument is inspiration is better than imitation. So basically saying the inspiration from a bird can fly is imitated as a flight. In previously. Yeah. 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 So but again, then the was actually <laughs> built by basically humans, right? So the the way to I mean even to think about okay something is flying and I need to fly as well so I need to build something which can fly or something basically humans are the one who's basically behind it so how this is relating with brain and yeah brain? you have brain similar to a bird and then you are a human you wanted to build a computer similar to a brain so you should inspire from brain and then create create a computer similar to the brain. No, see, so saying like is, humans are able to think like, okay, we are having this bug instead of imitating. Let's uh, follow another path, like take the inspiration and do it like this. So how can you do that same thing in machine? How can a machine do the same thing, like imagination? Like a hip, uh, as of now, a human should inspire from brain and then create a computer. Later, that's a different part of the story you are talking about. So After case, actually building. What is that? So how could you prove that? I mean, that's a statement you say. Because that's the statement that you gave. 
Yeah, so what did I give and what, how are you arguing that it's not a computer? Um, first of all, I don't understand um, how do you conclude that inspiration being better than imitation uh, to argue that brain is a computer. So do you want to say that when we take inspiration from uh, some uh, from brain and try to model the computer, that makes our brain as a computer? Yeah, that's what I'm saying. If you could inspire everything, if you could inspire the functional parts of a brain, and then build, uh, and then look at the concepts which drive the inspiration, you could definitely build those concepts in a computer and then call it a brain yeah, or a how, That's the how parts because I, I don't think. Yeah, I, I, I'm gonna I'm gonna provide some some other examples where we inspire from brain and actually how they are working currently. So I do have some examples regarding that. I mean, hold on to your question and then ask me later, yeah. Yeah, and one such inspiration is social teams, I mean, uh, like, we, we inspired from it and we created this distributed computing, right? So, one of it is that. And then from inspiration from human knowledge growth, uh, consider a small baby, uh, I mean, who actually learns from their experiences to speak or to walk, similar to similar to the current learning models. I mean, without any data, our learning models would fail, but then given a huge amount of data, our learning models could succeed. Right. So this is from learning from experiences. This is in inspiration from learning from experience. So, so how we inspired from biology? Are you done with the psychology Because uh, I uh, could not get the takeaway that you were trying to yeah, uh, so the main point I wish here is, uh, there's a famous psychologist, Robert Epstein. He actually compared each and every speck of a brain, I mean each and every component of a, brain, of a computer to a brain and then blatantly called that a computer is not a brain. So what I gonna tell is, so we should inspire more from that, I mean, rather than just uh, comparing each and every detail. So we should inspire from brain is not a computer? You should inspire from brain to make it a, uh, to make brain a computer. Okay. I mean, his point here, here is to state that uh, you, you need to get inspiration from the functional aspects and, and how how the brain is working overall and then maybe try to represent it in a in a different way rather than saying that I mean rather than trying to uh, model each and every neuron and then trying to make it work or something like that. So that does not convey that brain is a computer. So how do you convey the message that your argument that brain is a computer So these inspirations. Yeah, from these, I mean, I have some few examples. From these inspirations, we have actually developed uh, a model that's actually working better. But then when you combine all these inspiration into a single entity, yeah, yeah brain so, could be a computer. So you said like uh, previously uh, people thought to imitate a bird to build a flight the way it plays this way. Later they figure out, okay, instead of doing that, we can follow some, you can take the inspiration of flying, right? We can make in some other way, like aerodynamics. Mm -hmm. So, clearly says that you cannot compare these two, like a flight and a bird. So, will you say that a bird is a flight or a flight is a bird? You won't say, right? Though so, you took uh, the inspiration, uh, but you but, can't compare But they are doing the same activity, right? I mean, a flight also does. It, it's yeah, doing better than a bird. Only one perspective of the bird that is flying. But what is the speed at which the flight flies and the speed yeah, at which the flight varies? So, we can't say that a uh, bird is a flight or a flight is a bird. So, though you took the inspiration and you yeah. I mean, the, developed yeah, it, though you took the inspiration from bird and developed a flight, you can't compare those two. You are not going, definitely not going to compare those two. Yeah, definitely a flight is better than a bird now. Yeah, bird also has a lot of limitations. Does, yes, that's what my question is. Do you have to imitate each and every? Yeah. Okay. So, but if we look at it, okay, go on. Go on. Go on. So, you agree that uh, flight is different than bird? 
are you agree that flight is different than quality? Uh, so we are not comparing which one is better. We are just yeah. So are you comparing each and every speck of a bird to a flight and then saying that they are not equal? But then in the perspective of flight, yeah, both are both are actually doing the same functionality, but flight is doing much better than bird. Yeah, yeah, that's true. What you're saying is true, but that doesn't make bird a flight, a flight a bird. Yeah, but it's a brain, a computer, computer or a brain. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. I'm not comparing each and every speck. I mean, a bird has exactly, a... Exactly, the overall. The overall says yeah. it fly, it fly, that's it. One See, someone can inspire from the brain functionality and build a computer, so what but does they can't build all the functionalities of a brain, just like we can't build all the functionalities of a bird. So, why can't we, I mean, I mean, so what's the claim you're making? Here the I mean, purpose is like we took the inspiration from a bird and then and then we, we transformed it some, in such a way that uh, that we benefit from that thing, right? Like flight, we use it for transportation uh, to, to, to to travel uh, very long distances in a short span of time. So that's what we can take the inspiration from a brain and then create an intelligent agent which would be useful to us in in certain ways. That would imitate yep. the brain in one perspective. We are not, not imitating humans. I mean, we are not building. Okay, so what he mean is like, even though they are physically different, right, and their uh, mechanism might be different, but what is the main thing we are trying, right? Till now, how are you arguing like brain and the computer, right? Based on the functionality, like decision making, like the emotions, all those things. So what I mean is, even though the physical orientation, the way it is achieved, might be different between the brain and the computer. But if you get that same thing in the abstract level, you can say the brain is a computer, right? If you can imitate the function, like the decision making. See what the function? Okay, okay, okay. Yeah, yeah. Here the flight is the function. Similarly, in the brain. Psychology, flight is not only the function of the bird. There are several it's functions. It's the main purpose. Right? The transport yeah, you, you the the transportation. and other things also make the transportation. You frame it as a main event. That's the main purpose. Right? What is the main purpose? See, brain can do many things, and there is a concept called brain inspired computing. That means you are imitating your brain in only one perspective or the perspective that you want or you need for your Yeah, that's what it is. It's not that you can imitate all the perspectives of computer, right? Yeah, that's You are making something to benefit you, right? Exactly. So, they are just made to benefit us. It cannot you are arguing with all these terms like the decision making emotions, and imaginations, because those are the things you want, right? You are not digging up, arguing up with other perspective. Those are the perspective we have been picking up all the time. And now, that's the thing we are saying, like, here the perspective is flight. There, the perspective is like emotions, decision making, all the abstract level. Same thing, we, even if from the different path, if we can achieve that, then we can say, oh, okay, we mechanically or physically, they are different, but Okay, conceptually, they are in the same level of attraction. Yeah. Okay, by That's imitating right. these or inspiring from a bird, can you say flight is a bird? No, right? Flight is not a bird. Functionality. Yeah, yeah functionality. We could, we could definitely. Yeah. Uh, I mean, you're a... You're arguing yeah. thing now. Hold <laughs> so, uh, when I started, yeah. and let's focus on the heading of this slide, psychology. So, you are trying to, my, my understanding is that, you are trying to say, Let's just focus on brain. So brain takes inspiration of, uh, from something to do something else. Is that right? That's what I said. No, okay. no, that's not what I said. That's not? That's not what then I said. how do you connect the title of this uh, slide, psychology, to... Uh, okay, so I... I named this title because I would like to condemn the famous psychologist Robert Einstein. He compared each and every speck of a brain to a computer and said blatantly said that brain is not a computer. So you should see the functional aspect of a brain rather than rather than saying that if, if rather than just saying that brain is organized in a different way. Computer is from a silicon chip. Brain takes zeros and ones. A brain takes I mean brain doesn't even it takes electrical impulses, but computer takes zeros and ones. So you should not compare to that level. We are comparing to the functional level, so that answers your question actually. And and you are saying so so brain takes zeros and three. Brain takes electrical impulses and computer takes zeros and one. So brain is not a computer. Okay. That, that's what not talking. Taking claim. the functional aspects. So mm -hmm. let's even take the functional aspect. So thinking of inspiration, I something came to my mind as day, daydreaming. Mm -hmm. So even daydreaming has little lot of inventions. Okay. 
scan machines do that? Yeah, they can do that, but will they know? Will they ever know it is an invention? I mean, you, you were actually claiming from the future. I mean, yeah. are, I'm actually saying that uh, this brain, I mean, hum, I'm actually claiming that humans should inspire from brain to create a computer. And they so are inspiring now. argument, but how are you again arguing along with the, uh, along with the title of the brain as a computer? You're saying that if this can be done, like if the more we inspire from the brain and create a computer brain, can, sorry, computer can become a brain. Mm -hmm. But yeah, again, the, the, the more functional aspect. If it, this is done, this can happen. This is done, this can happen, right? Yeah. yeah I mean, yeah. we are already. Uh, I mean, this is this is the topic which is currently in the research stage. So, so we we should consider the future arguments like. Like I mean, what are the technologies that, that are actually? We have also presented some technologies which are leading us in that way. Okay, an example for this would be other than flight in the bird. Yeah, I do have some examples in the next few slides. Let me go through. So, so we inspire more from biology as well. So consider the neuron. A neuron has a dendrite cell body and an axon. So what does a dendrite do? I mean, it gathers information and then process it to the cell body. And then <coughs> axon actually sends those impulses to the other neurons. From this inspiration, we obtain the artificial neuron. Consider uh, the impulses as an. Now this model, just the recent paper I, I did uh, share on our community, where it says that the model of uh, you know brain and probably neuron is far more complicated than than what you are just showing here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I am going to say that too. So, so that that's correct, and hence it's a loose and half. Yeah. The point here is that if you understand even a brain at even at an initial level, it is able to get you something that works accurately like human. So the more you understand about brain and more how those things work, you're likely to get better results. So so you're right. It's it's a very loose analogy to compare this neuron with a mathematical uh, this kind of mathematical modeling of neuron several types of neurons, the way they interact is different, the way they organize is also different for for, for several tasks. So So, but what is the argument here? Is that you understand you understand the biology and you can model the computer hence brain is a computer? No. The, uh, the I mean it's just one of the things. Yeah. So the argument is that if you, um, as we understood this task specific neuron types and organization, we were able to simulate that in a computer and able to get results that a human would get. So the processes that are happening in brain might be similar to what is happening in the machine simulation. Based on that, um, for that specific task, now we are acting it similarly. I would think about, uh, I would suddenly make a decision to stand up here. How would brain do that? So, so that is different. I mean, so, so that's what I'm saying, the task specific, as, as we understand brain's functionality, on a task, for a specific task. We were able to do that task in a machine. And, and, and yeah, as we go on the next slide, um, we'll be more focused on, on that specific task. So, so if we understand brain at a very generic level or another task specific level, we should be able to do that in a machine. Do you think that a reductionist argument saying that at every level, let's say at a cell level, at a neuron level, at a um, particular functional component of the brain level, demonstrating a computational equivalent would uh, help you make this argument? Or do you think that you should make the argument at a purely functional level? Um, would you, how would you involve, how would you, how would you bring in behavioral component here? 
of human decision making? So that I consider as a different task. Decision making being a different task than image classification or object identification. Yeah, the point is that you have brick. The, is brick the house? No, is house the home? No, but if you understand but several the organization of bricks, you can you can make that particular kind of house. Yeah, but that brick can may not be a house. It may be a storeroom. I mean, it may be a, or or what do you call it? Maybe a part of or put under the under the road. I don't know. So um, to clarify, the way I I connect this brick is with a new one. So if a bricks, if set of bricks are organized in a way that it makes a storeroom, and if we understand that organization, then we should be able to make another storeroom. Um, so similarly, if we understand this uh, neuron organization for different tasks, um, there's a hope that uh, that that we can we can simulate that. Actually, in connect on uh, the before slides, they actually uh, took the neurons network of a worm and they. They embedded it to a robot, and without any programming, the robot is now, if it face any obstacle, just goes. There is no programming, just by using the network of, uh, a simulated network of uh, CNNs, neural networks. Yeah. yeah, so, yeah, the question is, does studying neurons understand how, make us understand how brain works? So that I'm going to answer in my next slide. So this is this famous experiment conducted by Dr. Kubel and Weisel, where they were actually trying to learn how neurons work in a visual cortex of a mammal brain. So what they have done is uh, they have planted electrodes in a cap, and then uh, for given input stimulus, they actually understood what involves and what are the they recorded the activity. So what is actually going in the neurons in pulses. So from that, they actually learned that it's a topographical mapping. Yeah, by, by that I mean in the visual cortex, the cells beside it contain the regions which you see. I mean, so if you are seeing something and the regions beside it are actually captured by the neurons that is beside this visual cortex. And then they also found that this is a hierarchical organization with retinal ganglion cells. I mean, they actually represent the, the critical circles or spots in how you visualize things. And then these simple cells, uh, they actually uh, visualize the interactions of their light. And then the complex cells visualize the movement. And then the hyper complex cells visualize the corners. So uh, so whenever you see a sub scene, that's actually hierarchically organized in your brain, I mean the computation what you do. So with this help, I mean with this inspiration, they have actually built a convolution neural network, which is actually doing a pretty good job in identifying, uh, in identifying images or objects in an image given a, given a large training data. So the more we inspire from every functional part of a brain, uh, we could actually build every functional aspect of a brain into a computer. These are just some ground base ground basics which are till now. So from the conclusion, so so brain is a black box. Uh, I mean I couldn't say it is completely a black box, but then it's a partial black box because we know some of the functionalities of a brain. So the more we know about this, the more we can model those things into a into a computer. And a computer could be far more intelligent than a brain. Yeah, it could eliminate all the flaws I mean a human brain possesses. 
so there is under this there, there is another technology called brain internet i mean it's like a human computer interface uh, considering brain as an iot node they actually publish the data on to web or a database so with all these current technologies uh, we could reach a level where we can model each and every everything of a brain to a computer so my suggestion is uh, debate on these functionalities of a brain debate on uh, debate on what made us still not get to this level of brain brain intelligence would benefit us and the internal concepts that drive these functionalities would benefit us as a different perspective that's all if we know this we can do this if we know this we can do this no it's been right? done it's not that we can do this no uh, just an example of if if we know how the inspiration works that can also be modeled so if we claim or if we put any argument you can basically put that argument off saying that if we know this we can do this right so basically i would say that that beats the whole purpose of the debate can be done in future only a exact argument so if you provide me with any concrete or some concrete example saying that okay this has been done in two or three years so if this can be so this can also be done in sorry done in uh, seven or eight years from now something some concrete example yeah. like that yeah. so a, a concrete example is is a, a neural network understanding images um, as we understood how our our at a very abstract or a loose analogical level we understood that how neurons are organized what kind of um, neuron cells are organized in what way we were able to do that um, within 40 years so um, the more we investigate on uh, um, let's say modeling and inspiration um, um, the more we there are chances of understanding that and if we can then we should be able to do that on a machine so the point is the time frame is is not that large so imagine this debate 50 years ago so what kind of questions we have what kind of you are asking right now is this going to achievable or something like that if this debate happened 50 years back like right now we have some things today maybe if somebody said those things are going to be happen or those things are going to be possible you might say that might not be possible that's not a arguable thing right 50 years back if this debate happens right of course future is uncertain and unpredictable you never know you never know that you could have in i mean created this neural network or deep neural networks right But, you know, yeah. 50 years ago, I would say. Yeah, that's the power of brain to imagine the future, which a computer cannot. Basically, try something out, and then you figure it out. Like, okay, we can create something like that. But years ago, I would still be arguing, no, brain is not a computer because only now it was created. It was future is uncertain, unpredictable. But now that yeah, we can but, see but learning but through experience is happening, <coughs> right? Before we never thought that machine can learn something. but currently we are reaching to active learning so we the machine can learn can get experience and this is what uh, maybe 10 years or 20 years back they never thought about it okay, that is actually even again boiling down to neural networks so it's not as powerful as what the human brain neurons are how do you functional device we can compare so i can give you two images which the which still the brain would sorry which still the neural networks would have difficulty in figuring out so you basically know how the image recognition and neural network works so i give two faces so if if you give me a face the neural network decides okay it has eyes nose and lips it can it will say that it will say it's a marker yeah it will say that it is a neural net i mean it is a person's face it doesn't matter why the eyes here lips here and this one here so how could you compare it with a pink thing I mean, so sorry, I didn't. I didn't I come from the first of your argument. Sorry, I didn't. If the neural nets is in a developing phase, and more and more they were investing, I mean, more and more they are looking at the brain, and then, and then forming neurons. I mean, modeling neurons. So it's more in a developing stage. You could not claim that 
uh, end up in a pink. not even able to detect eyes and face and nose. So exactly. So, it has so taken it is now able to more than that. 40 years just to do that. But if I teach a child or someone, okay, this is the face of a person, the next time no, it's even based on the person. This didn't take like yeah. instantly to human. Yeah. It didn't came instantly. This takes e yeah, yeah, evolution. This, it might take some time, but uh, better understanding of brain and yeah, if we understand brain more better way, yeah, we can like stray and stroll before we can build. So I mean, so you one work moment I'll give is you know, uh, earlier for instance, it was say 50 years ago, you know, the nature of our debate or the ideas would bounce back and forth with the right? So I would say, uh, even humanity's range of thought is also transcending not only machine intelligence or how we build the machines or how intelligent algorithms we build, but even our understanding of how intelligent our own brain is also is transcending over time. So 50 years from now, but the question, but more the nuances, question is, more enigma and more But the question is not people. actually computer is a brain or a computer will ever become a brain or become like a brain. So the question is, brain is a computer, whether brain is a computer or not, right? So first I think we need to define what a computer is, right? So uh, land machines were not invented, before the machines were invented, so uh, computer term was being used actually as a term, uh, referring to a person who can compute, right? So whatever it is to, compu uh, to be able to compute, then it's called a computer. So, even if we cannot actually figure out the computations being made within the, com within the brain, then we cannot deny actually that computation uh, is not being done within the brain, right? Some sort of computation is done within the computer, even though we cannot understand for now. So for that reason, I think the discussion should be based on uh, the argument uh, the, the computations being made uh, in, the com in, in the brain and rep uh, computations or collection of computations are the representations of the functions, right, functionality. And for that reason, for every functionality that the brain is doing, has some sort of computations being done, right? So for that reason, uh, we can actually say brain is a computer for, for, that, for that, so we cannot compare a, a brain to a uh, to a computer in terms of structure or organization or architecture. We should compare actually in terms of functions that brain is doing actually. So you can give a lot of examples, um, but brain can learn and can evolve and can function differently, and computer can do the same as well. So a computer can learn by experience, by learning from its surrounding world, and create some per perceptions of the things in the surrounding world, and can behave differently as well. So for that reason, these functionalities can be taught to a computer. Okay, but and to add to, to complete, and in one small sentence, if I want to summarize this sentence, I can say that your debate looks like you are going to build a brain. So we are not trying to build a human brain. We have to, re you, you have to remember that we are going to simulate. We are simulating the functionality of the brain. That's very different. So we are not trying to make one human, human brain. We are not building that. Exactly. So we have to focus on human functionality, the way it's simulated or we are going to simulate. That's, that's why when we talk about that, we focus on simul simulation or similarity function, um, functionality between the brain and computers. And not we are not thinking that, okay, the child, how it is, that is going to a structure or that's going to different, uh, looks like somebody is going to build a new human or new brain. That's, so that's different. That's, 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 that's the behavior is also a kind of a functionality. But it's two different, different things. There's yeah. some functionalities mm. as well. Functionality, functionality can, can be behavioral. So one of the behavior also can be modeled for. Yes. That can be also So uh, our third point um, on psychology, we believe, we stand that behavior in, is, uh, in psychology are interlinked. 
Um, so, how can you model uh, these three things, empathy, moral, and ethics? Because uh, there has been, okay, we are trying to do it. I'm not saying we are not trying to do it. We are trying to do it by taking inspirations. But um, how can you teach a computer to derive a personalized moral out of a story? And before answering that question, we have to put certain ground rules that you have to uh, defend only based on the past concrete research what is already done and whatever is in progress. You can't say we can model that and we don't need this now. That is why we didn't do that. You didn't give such answers. That yeah, of course you can argue that uh, yeah. you... Uh, so in that case, do you, do you think uh, we cannot ever model anything we want ever? Like if we... If we have a, a very complex idea, right? I can do research for as much time as I want, as I, 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 as I need, and then I will have a model, right? That can solve that but problem. But that is the future. The, and this, this so whatever, is we, whatever we are putting, putting uh, questions in this discussion is what the brain is currently capable of. So we have to depend upon the arguments, like what is the research being done, uh, can be done in future, but should be in progress or should be thought of by somebody. Okay, let me ask you this question. You can't think of a time machine going back in time, right? Okay, let me ask you this question. So if I have logs of wood. Lots of? Lots, logs of lots. wood, uh -huh. okay? Do you think I can make a very nice table out of it? Very nice table? Yes, yeah, someone yeah, has table, already right? done it in bus. Yeah, if, if I have... If you have the skills. Yeah, if you have the skills, you would be able to do it, right? So you don't blame the wood for not having a good table. You blame the one who modeled or did the shaping of the wood to make it into a table. Yeah. And that's why our arguments of whether a brain is a computer or not is, is not actually, uh, it, it's not like, I don't see that this is really fair because, because we are relying on a human that can build these models for me to mimic the way that a brain does uh, yeah. the, the jobs, right? And this is the point. I mean, uh, you know, as as good as you are, the computer is, is going to be uh, as good. It's going to be, right? Right? Yeah. Okay, so, so, so let, 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 let me, let me uh, answer your question. Um, <coughs> do you think we can make a board of complete iron? Sorry, board of iron. 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 A board. Iron. Iron, iron. A board com made of complete iron? Uh, yeah. Do you think that's possible? I don't think so. Okay, it is possible. You can you can have mm -hmm. iron shaped in that mm -hmm. form. Has it ever been done? No. Does it mean it cannot be done? No. It just means we don't need that. It can be done. Because yeah. Exactly, it can done be done. It's already done to ships. No, no, complete iron. It has other it, metals. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Exactly. So, so it's just that we don't need to do that, and hence we did not do it. It doesn't mean it cannot be done. Okay. So, so that's why the arguments that we have are not completely based on but, futuristic yeah. directions that could that could um, somehow happen, but. They are in a way that, um, okay, if this was possible, this seems possible. Is it worth doing it? I okay, think, I think also... Uh, okay, one, okay. Just, one, just very yeah, quickly. Sure. So I think if you believe in, in God that created a human being, or you believe in nature that made that evolution, and then we are here, right? We are possible to model and build, right? So regardless of what you believe in, we are here. Which means what? There is a possibility that we can build a model or a system that can do exactly or better than a human being. Do you agree? No. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. no. So when uh, Ashayam asked me about that iron board, and he, said, he said that is possible, right? How did you say that it's possible? Uh, so you, you I know can... somebody made it or you no, have... Like no, 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 no. I don't know somebody made it uh -huh. because nobody at a large scale would try to do that because it doesn't make sense. Yeah. But I for sure know that since wood can be 
crafted in the form of a boat mm -hmm. and since iron can be molded in the way we want, mm -hmm. we can make a boat out of iron. Okay, but so that doesn't, uh, you make a boat, boat right? Yeah. No, no, boat boat but it looks like a boat. That, 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 that is a different thing. Are Functionalities different. are different things. Whether you can do it or not. So it's the function. Her point was different. Her point was that you cannot make an argument on something that hasn't been done. So, let's be careful. If the argument uh, arguments are coming out of um, disagreement in what the question is. Then I'll, I'll reframe the question, it should, be more, it should be more clear. Do you believe we will reach singularity? That's, you can rethink of the question that way. Meaning, would the computers, this side would have argued the computers will be able to do anything that human does. And this side will argue that, you know, the humans uh, are uh, in human brain is uh, uh, so evolved or different, and uh, that uh, that no, that, that, that so doesn't seem like any path from the way we you know do computing to uh, something that will uh, be reasonable equivalent of the human brain. Um, you, you, if you do that, that that we you know that so there's no this you know I think that's a much clearer argument if you want to do that. Yeah. Okay, so let me just give you one example of my research and how is it, how the computer is exactly similar as a human being and how can we approach a solution for this, okay? So for example, there is in cognitive science something called, uh, uh, you know, category ellipsis, which means that you draw the category of a location name from the name. For example, if I say to you, I want to go to Sam's, do you want to go? And then... What would you understand? What is the shared context between me and you? The shared context is we don't have a Sam's, a friend, right? Yeah. So um, it's, it's impossible for me to tell you, let's go to Sam's, our friend, because we don't have a, a friend in common, right? Mm -hmm. But we know, we have a shared understanding between me and you that there is Sam's club. And the problem is, is coming here because we drop the club from the, from the, from the conversation, right? And then I can teach the, the computer to do the same thing by doing what? By, by having a shared context, by knowing, you know, personalizing the computations, right? Knowing exactly what are we, uh, you know, uh, what we share between each other, right? And this is what the whole field of personalization for machine learning comes into picture, right? That we are trying to do the same thing. So. So it's exactly the same as in the human brain. If I don't have a shared context between me and you, I meant Sam's my friend, but you meant Sam's club, and there is a disagreement. So which means what? It's exactly the same as a brain, that computer, that algorithm that did the same thing. So which means what? We need better way of capturing context, having better ways of dealing with knowledge bases and background knowledge, right? These are the things that are gonna make us uh, make the computers or brains um, more of what you can see as the abilities of a human that a computer already can do, but they cannot do because of the problem that we have a scarce data sets, less data, less accessibility of data, and so on. So we need to fix those, and totally, a brain is a computer. I agree, I, I, um, this is my stand. Okay, uh, since ages, so we have been comparing our human brain with the recent advancements of that era. Basically, we started comparing it with windmill, telegraph, hydraulic engines, now the computer. So, whatever you say, we are just in the phase of making the machine understand what I'm saying, basically. So, if I think of Sam, my friend, or Sam's club, I just want the machine to understand right away, whether I'm referring to Sam's club or Sam's. We, we still are in the phase of making the mission to understand what I'm saying. But how would, right? you expect, uh, how would you expect a computer to do that if you cannot expect a human to do that? No, what I'm basically saying is, well, yeah, yeah, we humans also have the problem. Only, I mean, when it comes to this conversational context, yeah. but we can do a lot of other things which the computer can't do, right? So I mean, we're only comparing those two similarities. Yeah, humans also have the problem, computer also have the problem. <laughs> 
when I solve that with the computer, I can also solve this with the human brain. Or when I solve it with the human beings, I can solve it with this. But it's just like we are in the very look, I mean, bottom of the food chain of just making the mission to understand what I talk and reply. So I think right? I think for a human being, it's just mental models, right? They have uh, different uh, sub proteins and so on that the human is gonna run for for them to to come up with or end up with a solution, right? This is exactly the same as what you can see a vision of Google now. They call it galaxy of models, right? So everything has a model. And then when I have when I have a sum of all of these models, I'm gonna have as abilities as what a human being can do. Which means what? It's not because of a, a, a computer is not like a brain. It's just a missing missing data, missing context, missing accessibility of data. So you cannot judge the wood not being good table. You should judge why I am not good at making tables. Okay, what if the wood is not good enough to make a table? What's there is a It is good. There? We have we have we No, no, no. What no, no, no I mean I can, we can. We are doing research and machine learning, right? So as as good as our our solution is, we will rank like we will make one F score. Who's who's not, you know, who's not, uh, you know, who's uh, like making a constraint for you not to reach one F score of accuracy, right? That's what we are arguing here. It's not because of the brain cannot do it. It's because us we we are not able to model these things. We are not able to provide context and data and so on. But still, there are some high level. So, is it possible to inquire? Sorry. Okay, but there are still you know, highly abstract thoughts which we cannot model into a machine. Like, for instance, I would just pick the theory of relativity. Yeah. Yeah. So, do you think would, would we ever be able to model a machine that could understand what the theory of relativity is, basically? So, I would just pick an example. For instance, you know, now. Let's say we have stayed in this uh, debate for the last an hour or so. So my perception of this environment is affected by so many internal and external factors, right? Yeah. So internal factors, for instance, I don't know, I might have taken campaign prior to this debate, and external factors, for instance, you know, everything is about you know, it's about it. So that gives result about the theory, you know, my perception of this environment. Right? The same one hour in a different setting definitely means something else. For instance, an hour on this planet is totally different from an hour on Mars. And the human brain somehow understands by what's called imagination. Imagination is spatial, temporal, thematic, transcendence. Right? No, I don't think I don't so, agree with you. So can we model this one? The imagination, the theory of relativity kind of just, you know, let, somehow. Let, and at this moment, no, 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 wait, 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 let me tell you something. And you know, exactly. So yeah. It is here that, you know, over the last, I don't know, less than two years, these uh, scientists uh, they have come up with what's called the factopoiesis. They have on their own admitted that the human our brain is beyond what, you know, all our neurons are beyond what we used to believe they were. So, okay, so factopoiesis okay. basically believes our intelligence is beyond what we thought, and it's biological. The fact that our intelligence is biologically induced brings about all these imaginative thoughts, subconscious thoughts, so thoughts. We cannot model our machine to have a conscious thought or a highly imaginative thought. A highly imaginative thought in a book like for example Carl Hagen's Contact. Okay, so do you believe you this one? Do you believe something comes out of nothing? It's 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 never the case. So for example Einstein, he's a PhD. It's not like, you know, he woke up one day and said, oh, relativity theory. It's not like that. It's, it's based on all the nuggets of information that he was able to create a semantic network out of them and then come up with that solution yes. and call it, uh, you know, relativity theory. Yeah, it's, it's all semantics. Which you means what? Which means what? Yeah. Which means what? You are actually exposing the brain to so much data that you are very stingy with the computer, giving them like one data set or two, and you say, oh, let the computer solve everything. It's not going to happen. You have to be as generous as a human, for a human. Like, you have to put a computer into and exposing the, the, the like, with gigabytes of data so the computer can start thinking and start connecting the dots and uh, arriving to uh, conclusions, right? 
Yeah. Computer can you know, start thinking. So what is the yeah, let's, let's, no, yeah, yeah. It's, it's uh, for example, what do you call about thinking? What what is thinking? What do you call a thinking procedure? Like you call it? Or intelligence? Sure, it's a, basically an intuition that I think. That's it. So, what what is, so you, you think? Do? You think? You is, let, do? So here is the thing. There is there is uh, there is a procedure that you follow, right, to come up with a solution, right? And that's that's what an algorithm is, right? Which means what? You actually have a mechanical way of doing stuff to reach to the conclusion, to the result. You know, uh, so what do you mean by thinking? It's just nothing or what? That's, that's the question. Depends on the question. So if I need something, yeah, I will start thinking about what I want or what I'm, what's going to be in the future, what I'm like doing in the future. Like what? Give me an example. Okay, maybe to... Right now, I might be thinking, okay, what am I going to have for the dinner? What do I have in the fridge? What am I going to cook? Okay, so what is that difference from uh, searching Google and saying, give me a recipe of dinner? I should know what's in the what's in the fridge in the first place. I can okay, so the, see, that exactly, is? so you open it. This means what? You are getting information. Okay. Right? Yeah, I see that. But so that's an input, uh, input, uh, input output, I.O. But I decide maybe, okay, I'm short of this uh, dish, sorry, this ingredient for this recipe, I can go and buy it. Or I can make the recipe, sorry, the dish too with the ingredients that I have. So I have an option there, I think that way. How will the Great, machine? even the computers are way better than this, actually, than humans. Com but basically it depends on my need. Do the computers how have a way, focus or a need? How they are way better than this? What? How the computers are way better than this? Because they have one billion options of what they can do with three ingredients, for example, while you have only one or two that but you have that in can, mind. That cannot be the preferred options for a human brain, right? A, uh, a, a human brain in Iran prefers another dish to make with the three ingredients, whereas the Indian brain may think of another. Then we come to so, personalization. So in that case, in that case, human is way more no, no. than the computer. So here's the thing. So, so first of all, your mental model is not is not is did not develop in one day. You already lived in a culture that taught you and you experienced things yeah. to reach to that conclusion that oh I I'm, I prefer those yeah. to other ones. Yeah. How would you actually? expect a computer to know this thing about you without any input to it. We are not expecting you know, the so computer it's to It's not like this game. Yeah. We are not yeah. 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 So, okay guys, uh, so I think uh, um, I like the fact that there is some engagement. Um, I think uh, if you want to do the argument, um, you know, I, one, one strategy I always talk to you about, uh, keep this in mind. You have a choice of going and playing in somebody else's sandbox, or you have a choice of really defining your sandbox and inviting others to play, and that you know your sandbox very well. And analyze those of you who have carefully participated, and analyze your strategy and whether you employed this strategy. And realize if you could do so that better. So I hope you will get some sense of it. And then I'll put you something to think about. And just distinguish between deterministic and non-deterministic things. Other thing is distinguish between what makes your brain that uniquely human, you know, part of hu human. You have, I have shared with you, think about, um, uh, you know, recently there was a white paper, what was it about? Um, uh, intuition, uh, adaptability, abstraction, I think along those lines, and I'm not saying that there are not arguments from the side of computer is think that that can be done, there probably are. Uh, and but that is you know those are the kind of things. If you are going to argue about uh, things that can be reasonably uh, modeled and things that we do today, that you if you that won't get you anywhere. But if you are going to argue along the things of things being very unique, things being there was some discussion going on here about personalizing you know personalizing it, uh, cultural and my aspects of it. 
ethical, ethical thing, moral, the um, uh, distinguishing between what's right and wrong, many other things along that line. But go along, you know, look at those final aspects and then see whether the arguments can be, uh, you know, that, that this, it will be one more on one side or the, or the other side. But again, imagination machine, that was an article that I shared recently. That is not the only one, there are several of those. Again, um, I do think that um, while uh, one of you did bring up uh, Doug Hofstadter's argument, I don't think that that was argued as effectively as it could have. So it was a good point, but it was not, I think, um, you know, uh, internalized enough to be able to counter the point. Uh, that the nuance that Doug was, the glass was saying, wasn't captured and you were not able to effectively utilize to counter your opponent. So think along those lines, but there's plenty of interesting material for both sides to do, but listen to Doug Hofstadter, listen to uh, Roger Shank, listen to many other people, uh, listen to um, some excellent uh, you know, uh, things on the other side also that they are there, and base along that line. It's perfectly okay to argue at the level, but it's better to up your game and understand what has already been said by some of the you know, really accomplished people and use them. I didn't see as much use of that. In fact, the only thing that showed up was Doug's uh, uh, thing, and that was used but not that effectively. There's so many other things that people have done. Take their arguments. You came up here based on what seems natural to you, and this is fine. But of the game, that's why we have all that reading material. And that I didn't see. Okay? So now go and uh, uh, look up, and then we'll continue.